Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, on this Resurrection Sunday. Today we look at the account of the resurrection as written by the Gospel of Mark. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the victory over death accomplished through your Son, Jesus Christ. Because he has victoriously rose from the dead, you, O Lord, now have shared that victory with us through our baptisms. We too know, O Lord, that we will rise again, our bodies. We thank you for the life eternal bestowed upon us through the work of Christ. Keep us confident, O Lord, in this faith so that we are not afraid to share it with the world. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, I don't really need to tell you that death brings darkness. Most of us who have experienced that of a loved one, a friend, understand that. Imagine the darkness that took place on that first Good Friday where an innocent man was executed as a criminal. He was deprived of justice, and his friends and his own mother sat at the foot of the cross, wondering why. Even though the sun may have shined the next day, I'm sure it did not remove the pall of darkness over the heart of Mary, his mother, and his disciples. The reason for that is because uh, death is so final. They're not coming back. We grieve the loss of a relationship. We grieve the loss of a person. There seems many times when we bury the individual, there is no hope of return. Imagine, therefore, if you were to ask the ladies that were going out to the tomb that first Easter morning, what do you expect to see there? You didn't even have to wait for an answer. You would know what the answer is just by looking what they are carrying in their hands. They're carrying ointments for a dead body. They wished to have some closure through the ritual of anointing the body of Christ, giving it its due diligence. As they were walking, you can imagine that no matter how bright the sun may have been shining that day, there was a pall of darkness over their hearts. Ever though they did forget something on the way, and that was they forgot about the stone. How are they going to get to the body to anoint it with that darn stone in the way? They didn't even think about that. Well, you might ask, well, why didn't they go and ask the disciples? Well, the disciples, they were all locked up in their fear, were they not? Imprisoned in a room. They weren't going to show their faces out there in the world. They were afraid they'd get arrested and crucified. So the ladies knew asking the disciples would get nowhere. But you know what? The ladies continued to journey on with hope that maybe they would run across a nice, strong gentleman that might remove the stone so they can get their job done and go home. What they saw was entirely something they didn't expect. They came to the tomb and saw the stone rolled away. They had access to the body, or maybe not. What do you think went through the minds of the ladies when they saw that stone rolled away? Do you think they immediately thought he was raised from the dead, or do you think they raised, minds started raising and saying, Now who stole the body of my friend Jesus? Do they have to desecrate the body even more than through the crucifixion? Why must they do this to us? Why must we receive more darkness upon darkness? What is God doing to us? Where is the body? But as they got to the tomb, they also witnessed something else they didn't expect to see, an angel. That angel told them that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom they were seeking, is not here. He is risen, just as he said. You should have come expecting on the third day to see a risen body, not a dead body. Why are you bringing these ointments in your hands? Where is your faith? So we have this news. The body is gone because it's risen. Wait a minute, though. How many people would believe that story? Can you imagine the ladies going to the beauticians and saying, Oh, my friend Jesus is not dead. He's alive. You mean how many people would believe that? The gospel ends here kind of funny, does it not? It says in Mark 16, verse 8, that they were so frightened, so frightened, that they said nothing to anyone. They were afraid how the world would respond to them, how many people would believe them. It's just best that we stay silent because of what response we're going to receive. This is too unbelievable. Fear binds the tongue. What loosened the tongues of the ladies eventually was faith. Over the course of time, 
the word continually became announced to them that he is risen. And from what we heard in the epistle today from Corinthians, Jesus appeared to the 12 disciples and to another 500. People had seen him. No one had seen him risen from the grave. All they went and saw was an empty tomb. Even the Roman soldiers there stationed at the tomb did not see the resurrection. They just saw an angel in an earthquake and the stone rolled away. It just goes on to share with you that this is the, not the greatest story ever seen. It's the greatest story ever told. We believe it because of words, not because of eyesight. The Holy Spirit has led us to this conviction. Jesus is alive. Therefore, on Easter Sunday services, we say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the words and the news that we need to proclaim to the world today. Our faith needs to continue to be strengthened so we have no fear. That we can listen to these words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, where he shares with us this confident truth. If God is for us, who is against us? If God is for us, why not share the news now? Why are we so afraid? Who can be against us? As a matter of fact, we have a great promise to share with the people of the world. I love this verse as it seems to speak to what we can do for the world today. The Lord God has given me the tongue of discipleship to sustain the weary. I know I've been wearied in life. I'm sure you have been tired. And maybe you know people in your circle of friends who are tired and weary of the curveballs life has been throwing them. Life's not been going good for them. But the news of the resurrection sustains the weary. Why? Because it promises these people that what they're experiencing is not the end. There is victory to take place at the end, not defeat. Loosen your tongue. Share the words of the resurrection in confidence and faith, especially among the weary who need to be sustained by the great words of the gospel. There are so many things out there competing for the human heart of what to believe that takes place after death. Now, there was a man by the name of Martin Heidegger back in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. He was an atheist German philosopher. And he had thoughts on death that were quite contrary to the Christian church. If you were to ask Martin Heidegger, what do you expect to see when you go to the cemetery? He would answer, I expect to see liberation. What? What do you mean by that? since you're not a believer. He would argue that most of our life is dictated by what people think about us. We're so worried about our impression and what people are saying about us, we want to meet their standards. When we struggle about this and are bound to what they think we should be, we need to go to the cemetery. And there at the cemetery, we will see where they and all people will end up in the realm of nothingness. So when I go to the cemetery, Martin says, I see freedom. I live the life I want to live, not the life people want me to live, because all of us are going into nothing. Deal with the fear of nothingness, and you will be set free. That's not what the Bible says, right? Jesus says the truth will set us free. You might say, well, how prominent is that thought in America or in our world today? Well, as a matter of fact, there is this book written, The Denial of Death, just recently by Ernest Becker, and he says the same thing that Heidegger says. Deal with your fear of nothingness, and you'll be set free. If you all realize that you are going to become nothing eventually, why are you worried about what you're doing now? When you go to the cemeteries today, what do you expect to see? You expect to see mortal flesh. But also as a Christian, you walk into the cemetery not in the manner of Heidegger, but in the manner of Jesus Christ. So that when you walk into the cemetery, you see not nothing or defeat, you see victory. As St. Paul says, when he walks into the cemetery, he's not worried. He's not dealing with the fear of nothingness. He recognizes that he will live eternally. For he says, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you walk into the cemetery in the manner of Christ, you mourn the death of a loved one, but you also see victory. My father, he was one who taught me a lesson about respect for the dead. When I was maybe seven or eight years old, he would take me to the funeral home and have me come to recognize my mortality as he would let me see 
someone that had died, but not one that was related to us, soften the event. My dad was always wanting to teach me about mortality, the dust of mortality, and the respect for it, with the honor of victory that yet to come. One thing that my dad was really heavy into was genealogy. And you know what you do when you research in genealogy? You track the dust of relatives. I'd lived in Indiana for 31 years. And every year my dad would come visit us twice a year and he'd always say, I want to go find a grave. And I'm like, well, if we have time, dad, we'll get to it. I want to go find the grave of the stuff will be. I'm like, who's they? I don't know. My dad was very resident when I asked him about those questions because he knew what I thought about his genealogy research. But the proverbial day happened. One day my dad stayed long enough and I had nothing to do but to go find on this stuff will be treasure hunt. So literally, uh, we did wander Indiana. <laughs> Didn't know where we were going. I think I ventured up and ended up somewhere near Lafayette, Delphi, Indiana, not really sure. But the stuffle bean treasure hunt came up empty. My dad was not getting lucky in finding the dust of the stuffle bean, the dust of mortality. So we were hiding home, and I didn't know where we were going. I was lost, thank God, that uh, we had compasses and cars, but I didn't really have GPS. I just knew I needed to go north. As I drove north, we went through a small town, and by golly, we drove right by a library. I said, hey, Dad, one last shot. Libraries have burial records, cemetery records. Let's just go in and look there. So we went in, and the librarian, she was like an angel to us. She opened up the cemetery record book, and right there staring in our face was the name Stufflebeam where even the grave was buried. Got back in the car, went to those county address roads, and came across an abandoned, secretary, abandoned cemetery. Weeds have not been mowed for years. The fence was in badly need of repair, and gravesite tombs were all treated with wind erosion. We walked in that cemetery, and we got to the corner, and there it was, Stufflebee. I wanted to turn and shout to my dad, Eureka! But as I turned, there was no time for celebration. My dad was in solemn reflection. I found out later that we were standing on his mother's grandfather's grave. My dad was giving respect to, from the dust of mortality from which he came. But my dad, as a Christian pastor, also was not afraid to face it. Shortly after we got to the stuff of beans, my mom and dad both died. They're buried in Granite Falls, Minnesota. That's 960 some miles away. I've not been to the grave site since I committed my mother's remains to the ground. But if I were to go, I would not approach that cemetery in the manner of Heidegger. I'd approach it in the manner of Christ. I would not fear facing the dust of mortality from which I came. I will not fear nothingness. You know why? Well, because some years ago in 1959, I, respect, I received the gift of immortality through the waters of baptism. And I, entering cemeteries in the manner of Christ, know because of him, I will always, and you always, will be something eternity because as well as you know he is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah amen now may the peace of god which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in christ jesus